Hello everyone, uh, in this problem we're going to be talking about uh, pins or bolted connections here and talking about the shear stresses that develop. And so there's two types of shear stress you're going to want to talk about. Uh, that single shear applications and then below here we'll talk about double shear applications. And so in single shear, um, this example here like the lap joint, um, we've got two pieces of material here, we've passed a bolt through it and we've got a nut here and we're looking at the shear stresses that would develop. And so, just to give us some things to talk about, let's say this top plate here has a force that it's trying to pull it to the right, and this bottom plate here has a force that's trying to pull it off here, kind of to the left and back out of the screen. Or in this picture, that would amount to, here's my F, and here's another force, same magnitude pulling off this direction. And so, what you can see it happen, um, if I get these forces large enough, um, there's a few types of modes of failure that could happen, uh, but one mode of failure would be that the bolt or pin here, whatever we stuck in here, would fracture, and it would break right along this intersection here, right? And so, we've got this one plane that sits right here, um, one shear plane, if you will. Um, really, if I looked at the pin itself, it would just be a circular cross-section that we would be seeing there, uh, but in single shear applications, the important thing to remember is I just have this single plane uh, where the shearing is taken into effect, right, because so I'm going to have uh, some shear forces trying to pull this way and some shear forces going this way uh, trying to shear this thing apart, and that's notorious of our single shear, and so hopefully you're seeing the, the shear part of it, and so we'd have tau here for our variable for the shear stress. Um, expression here is just A over S, or excuse me, F over A sub S, which is the force over the area in shear. And so since there's just a single plane of our bolt or our fastener here that's in shear, um, this would just be equal to the force all over the area of, we'll call it the bolt in this case. And so here, if we had these as our inputs, 5,000 pounds for the forces uh, that we're trying to be transmitted through the joint, and the diameter of a half inch, well, we'd have force all over the area is going to be circular, so pi over 4 diameter squared, um, which goes to 4F over pi D squared here. And so we've got 4 times our force of 5,000 pounds all over pi times the diameter of 0 0.5 inches. And so 4 times the 5,000 pounds divided by uh, pi times 0.5 squared. I'm seeing roughly 25,465, we'll call it. 25,465 PSI there. And so that would be the shearing stresses experienced by this uh, bolt here. And again, this is an example of single shear uh, because we have only that one shear plane experience by the fastener itself here. And so our default formula is for tau, the shear stress, is equal to the force over the area in shear. And notice here the area in shear is just equal to the area in the bolt. And those are associated with uh, this single shear application. Well, if I come down here, um, I've got a common example here where I can find a double shear application of a fastener. And so here is a come along style winch, right? Um, I personally have used this to um, stretch bob wire fence. And so if I look at the right connection here where it's got the hook, um, here's a close up where the hook's got this fastener here uh, that connects it in with the rest of the frame itself here. And so the idea here is if I look at this, um, there's a little bit larger of a gap than I would like, uh, but essentially we're going to have, if I can zoom in here, uh, the resisting force of what our hook to is going to be trying to pull through the chain or through the hook uh, going off to the right hand side here and then I've got the resisting force here um, associated with uh, say using the ratchet mechanism to increase the tension in the uh, strap on the other side uh, pulling off to the left through here through this sheet metal frame and so what happens is in this area here and in this area here, 
we're going to have these shear planes develop. And notice that we have one fastener here and we have uh, two different planes on the fastener uh, where these shearing stresses are going to develop and hence the double shear application. Really, if I um, wanted to be somewhat particular about this, there would be a very, very small amount of bending also happening here uh, just because of uh, the small gaps. You're going to see that the uh, thickness of that hook is not equal to the gap between those sheet metal pieces, um, but that's going to be fairly small compared to the shear stresses that we would see in the fastener itself here. And so, um, pulling force of 2,000 pounds, um, actually if you look at the black part here stamped on that, um, it has a max pulling force of 2,000 pounds, they state, and I think it was a lifting force of 1,000 pounds here. And so let's say uh, we're pushing this come along to the uh, top end of its recommended use, um, have it pulling with a force of exactly 2,000 pounds. Uh, the bolt here, uh, let's just assume it's just a solid circular cross section here with a diameter of 5 sixteenths of an inch, and then we'd say, okay, under these circumstances, what is the shear stress in the, the bolts here? And so um, we've got shear stresses we're talking about here, direct shear application, so it's force all over area and shear. Uh, notice this is the exact same formula that we started off with in our single shear application, but in our next step we're going to change things a little bit. And we'll say, okay, that's equal to, well, the force that's trying to be transmitted through the joint, that's fine. Uh, but the area in shear, that's going to change a little bit. Because now notice here we've got these two different planes on the bolts uh, that are going to be experiencing these shear stresses. Um, one way that you can think about it as well, if this thing was completely fractured, I'd have to break through both the first part here as well as the bottom part in order for the chain in order to move and be free to the, the right-hand side here assuming that the, the bolt doesn't just break once and fall off. Um, it would be in the vertical direction, I guess, of that picture. And so since there are these two planes um, where the shear stresses are going to be de developing, this is now two times the area of the bolt, not just the area of the bolt as in single shear, uh, but since we do have double shear and just the one bolt, it's two times the area of the bolt. And so um, after that, we're just really down to algebra and a little bit of geometry. Um, the area of the bolt, well, that's pi over 4 times the diameter of the bolt squared. Um, here I can do some algebra and make that a 2 down below, cross another 2, ends up at 2f all over pi d squared. And notice if it was in single shear, um, we would have 4f over pi d squared. So by putting something in double shear, we're basically reducing the shear stresses experienced by the fastener by half. And so I've got two, we said it was 2,000 pounds that we were loading the come along little winch up to uh, pi, and the diameter was 5 sixteenths of an inch, and we're squaring that. And so we've got two times the 2,000 or 4,000 pounds on the top side of things, uh, divided by pi times 5 sixteenths squared. Uh, gets us to write about 13,038 PSI. There we are. 13,038 PSI for the shear stress experienced by this fastener. And so there you have it. Um, between single shear applications and double shear applications, uh, really in a lot of these style problems, uh, the most important critical thing to recognize I, is first that it is shear stress, so um, we're talking about tau for our variable here for talking about the stress, and then force over area and shear is our default formula, and then really on area and shear, the big thing to remember is just to look for uh, the different shear planes, and think about um, how the fastener is going to be loading, is there one plane or two planes of shear that we're talking about here, or possibly if there's multiple fasteners here, um, there's multiple ways to looking at that, but it really all amounts to uh, figuring out how many planes of material that you're looking through uh, that has to be sheared off, assuming a very idealized situation there. And so hopefully this helps you um, understand the difference between single and double shear and able to work these types of problems. Uh, as always, thank you for watching the video.